Hello students, welcome back to the organ painting course. In the last few lectures, uh, we have discussed what is bioprinting, what are the different types of bioprinting technologies available, along with in great details we have discussed all the different types of bioprinting technologies. In this lecture, we will now compare different types of bioprinting technology available also, the, we will compare the, the capabilities of different bioprinter types, right. So like, so if you see in this table, I have listed the different pa properties, parameters of the bioprinting technologies and also then we will discuss different types of bioprinting technology like inkjet extrusion and laser assisted that we have already discussed in the earlier lectures right so we'll go one by one so in terms of material viscosities now we know what are the now we at this stage we know what are the different types of materials or at least what are the different types of viscosities can be used for different types of bioprinters during discussion of each of these technologies I have discussed what kind of viscosities are good or viscosities are required for printing tissue structure with a particular type of pie printer. So when you see viscosity like material viscosity then in case of inkjet, inkjet printing works on the principle of droplet generation using either thermal or piezoelectric piezo based mechanism right so there mostly we use mostly we use very low viscous material and i have also mentioned that we mostly we use water like viscous material so the viscosity in this case in case of inkjet printing is very low and please remember if this viscosity almost like water or buffer that kind of viscous materials mostly we use that's why there is, a, there is also I have pointed there is a challenge of printing three dimensional structures with this with this low viscous materials. So the viscosity in case of inkjet the viscosity is low. Now coming to extrusion based bioprinter there we can use low to moderate viscous even high viscous material can also be used right. So this technology in extrusion based printing technology here the very wide range of viscous material can be used starting from very low viscous to high viscous materials can be used because here the principle is we put the material into the syringe and then we apply pressure on the syringe either it can be a pneumatic pressure or it can be a uh, mechanical pressure for extruding the material so that's why in this case this printer is capable of extruding materials of different viscosities starting from very low to very high so this is like 30 PPA as to almost 10 to the 7 MPS viscous that much viscous viscous material can be used in case of laser assisted we uh, from low to moderate viscous material we can use very high viscous materials cannot be used in case of laser assisted because if you can recall the mechanism of this laser assisted bioprinting we have seen there that he has a ribbon like structure then the top layer is the glass layer that can where the laser can pass through that and then the energy absorbing metal layer where the laser can strike and then the metal layer can get heated up and then it gets heated up and then the black layer is the bio wing where the bio wing and then when the laser hitting the gold metal layer the bubble will be produced because of this high pressure gas there that propel the droplets to generate right or the droplet droplets are dislodged by that high pressure gas so that, that's why if you use very high viscous material then the there will be a problem of dislodging the material or this droplet generation there will be a huge problem in the droplet generation so that's why in case of laser assisted bioprinting mostly we use low viscous material low to moderate viscous like this this viscous materials now we have also discussed the gelatin gelatin methods gelatin is important because of the because it induces solidification of the printed material that means in any of this printer like when we 
extrude the either we extrude the material or generate droplets by any of this printing thing that time the material is in the form of fluid right then after the printing that material should start solidifying that's why why because that solidification process enables safe retention of that printed structure suppose we have to print a particular structure then if the structure if the material can solidify upon extrusion or upon generous upper generous upon printing then that time the material can retain its shape otherwise there will be a shape distortion so the printing fidelity would, would be not that great so that's why we need certain kind of gelatin but most important thing is that we need biocompatible gelatin but there are different types of gelatin mechanism exists exist like chemical gelatin or photo cross linking even different uh, physical cross linking like shear thinning temperature induced cross linking all these things are there so in this case we will see like in case of inkjet both chemical and photo cross linking gelatin method can be possible because when the material suppose the material comes out as in uh, from the nozzle as droplets at this stage suppose if we, if we introduce some cross link like the suppose the photo initiators are already mixed so in case of let me explain this photo cross linking in case of photo cross linking what happens the the material is mostly photo cross linkable that means photosensitive materials are mostly used and then we also add some photo initiator so photo initiators are the material that upon exposure to light that will initiate this cross linking process so photo cross linking is very important for solidification process and that that process can also be very fast like so photo cross linking can be option chemical cross linking is like when if we eat today suppose after extruding these droplets these droplets are collected to a substrate where we introduce some other Okay, some cross linkers so that cross linkers is a thing that can go and bind to the material by by chemical means so that is it induce some chemical chemical cross linking so both these things are possible with gel for inkjet in case of extrusion different types of cross linking either it can be chemical photo shear thinning is another thing shear thinning means where the with the upon increasing the shear rate if the viscosity of the material comes down so what happened in case of extrusion when we are extruding the material we are basically we are applying some kind of force so that due to the shear force shear due to the shear high shear rate there during extrusion the material viscosity comes down so it helps in extruding the materials but then when the material comes out of the nozzle then the, there is no shear force so that time the viscosity again goes up so that helps in retention of the structure retention of the line retention of the structure in case of extrusion based biopic so shear thinning material definitely helps in better shape retention so that that's why these materials are very popular or very very good for to be used as a, a material biomaterials for extrusion based bioprinting similarly temperature induced cross linking can be another thing suppose i use a material that has a temperature sensitivity that means at suppose below at uh, let's take an example where suppose gelatin now gelatin we know that gelatin has a critical transition temperature around 30 degrees centigrade so above 30 to 30 degree it behaves like a fluidic material but below 30 degree it behaves like a semi gel semi it's like a gel okay so now what i can do i can use this so during printing i can maintain the temperature above 30 so that the print material can easily come out but after printing i can reduce the temperature so i can reduce the temperature or that means i can collect that at a time I collect that on the stage at a lower temperature where the temperature uh, can be maintained below 30 degrees and so that helps in again solidification of the gelatin material gelatin diamond so similarly like this there are various types different types of material materials available we can use them as uh, for this extrusion based biopic similarly for laser assisted either chemical or photo cross linking both the things are possible here because in in inkjet and laser assisted please note that in both these cases because it's a nozzle free approach that's so we cannot we don't have the advantage of using a shear thinning material in both these cases right but we can use any chemical cross linking or photo cross linking for laser assisted bioprinting and also for inkjet based bioprinting so this is this is for gelatin methods we can use these different types of cross linking mechanism and now you have must have a clear you have a clear idea in which bioprinting technology what kind of cross link gelatin methods can be applied
Now let's take the preparation time. Preparation time means here starting from the bi wing preparation to the printing, all these things, right? To the generation of the CAD model, even the printing codes, everything, creating the codes, writing the codes, everything comes under this preparation time. So in case of inkjet, because the process is very simple, we need to the we don't have any very high preparation time. The bioing can be prepared very fast. Here, bioing means mostly the cells or biomolecules, those are suspended or mixed with the media, right? And then that is can be the different that can be directly used. So the preparation time is very less for inkjet printing. It, here also the other thing doesn't take much time. But in case of extrusion based bioprinter, the preparation time is low to media because certain cases we need to prepare the biomaterials or the bio ink and that can take some time. So the and then also we need to again we need to add big cells with this. So we need to take care of so we need to take care of those that process because the cells are very sensitive. So when you mix with meat, you will mix with the material, then we also have to provide nutrition, oxygen, all to the thing. So that can take some time because the, we need to prepare the bio ink where suppose the cells are encapsulated within the hydrogen then we'll add some media where nutrients are there and then and also the oxygen oxygen is there so those things so the preparation time in case of by in case of extra center bio printing is medium where medium in case of laser assisted bio printing the preparation time is medium to high what happened if you can recall in laser assisted bio printing one component is the ribbon so ribbon, as I, as we have already discussed, ribbon is a three layer, three layer thing. Where the first layer is the glass, then the next, next, then below the glass there is an absorbing layer or the metallic layer. Then the bio. -wing. So that ribbon has to be prepared in advance before the bioprinting process. So that's why the tape may take some time. So that maybe it, so here in case of laser assisted bioprinting, the preparation time is medium to high. So it, other thing is also we have to the whole process can take some time so that's why this here it is medium to high so please remember in case of inkjet because of the simplicity of the process the preparation time is low but in case of extrusion bio printer the bio ink is the main ingredient here so bio ink preparation of bio ink may take, take some time in case of laser assisted we have to prepare the bio ink also we have to prepare the ribbon so that may take some time so that's why the preparation time is medium to high in the case of laser assisted bio printing now coming to the print speed definitely inkjet printing outperforms all other process because in case of inkjet printing is a high throughput process because hundreds of droplets can be generated at a time so that 10,000 droplets can be generated per second so this process is very very fast right so that's why because the, the mechanism is such that in case of inkjet printer we have discussed this that we, there's in the printhead there's a nozzle so there's a several nozzles so multiple nozzles are lined up in the printhead printhead and then at a time they can be filled and they can the droplets can be generated at a time so this is a very high throughput process the droplet generation is very very fast in case of extrusion based printer because the material has to be extruded through the nozzle so their challenge the challenge is we cannot we cannot push the material very fast otherwise what will be that can lead to shear stress generated shear stress generation of shear stress that shear stress can get damage the cells so this process is little slow right in extrusion based bi bi printing this process is slow so here like 10 to 50 micrometer per second so that only that much speed speed can be used for printing that structure right so in case of extrusion based printer print time is Print speed is typically slow. In laser assisted, it can be medium to fast because here also it's a contact based, contactless, non contact approach, nozzle free approach. So that's why in this case also we can print very fast. It depending upon the how the laser, how but the laser moving on the surface and how fast that those droplets can be generated. So here also the it can this process can be medium to fast. So in terms of print speed, inkjet printing out far from all others resolution or droplet size here also the inkjet printing again outperform all other printing type all other printed types because here also very fine droplets starting from one picoliter to 300 picoliter that that's it like that much fine droplets can be generated right it also depends depending on it's also depends on the 
the nozzle diameter right most of the time we have seen the nozzle diameter is around 50 micron so so that typically we can generate very fine droplets so that's why the resolution is very very fine and with these fine droplets we can create a very nice architect very nice pattern of this this different cellular constructs that's why for cell patterning inkjet printing is a very popular technique for cell patterning for cell also I, we have discussed this in our inkjet printing lecture that where inkjet printing that's why inkjet printing is used for patterning cells dna all other different types of or different types of things in case of extrusion based bioprinting here the resolution is directly dependent on the nozzle diameter right so if we can get in if we can have nozzles of fine nozzles fine nozzles then the resolution can be high but if the nozzle size is more then again the resolution will be compromised but one important thing to remember here though some nozzles of 5 micrometer nozzles are available okay but depend please remember the cell size is almost like 10 to 30 micron anywhere between this right different types of cells that's why now we cannot use a nozzle lesser than even very close to the cellular dimensions right we have to have a nozzle size that is higher than cellular dimension so that's why typically 100 or more than 100 um, micro nozzles are used for bioprinting with extrusion based bioprinters so the resolution is here is not that great like inkjet bioprinting but typically different resolution is also in this case which is good laser assisted here also again the resolution is very high very good because here we can get a micro scale resolution where we can generate droplets containing single cells so that much fine visualization can be made so this that's why this again laser assisted bioprinting technique here yeah, this is this also the resolution is very good resolution is very very good in case of laser assisted bioprinting and that's why with this kind of bioprinters even with ex, uh, inkjet similar to ex, inkjet based bioprinting we can generate droplets containing single cells and then those single can single cells can be patterned as per the requirement and we can create a very nice multicellular architecture of a particular tissue right so that's why these things are these two printing technologies are very good of this thing now coming to the cell viability because these two inkjet printing and laser assisted both are nozzle free approach non-contact based approach so the cell viability is very very good though in case of inkjet printing there is some concern about the heat generation of heat but if you can take care of the parameters definitely the, that heat cannot be that much damaging to the cells so we can get very good cell viability like more than 85 percent cells can be viable and in case of laser assisted also similar thing if you can take care of the laser intensity and the duration then definitely you can get a very good cell viability 95 percent but in case of extrusion based bioprinting actually uh, as per the literature literature a wide range of viability people have seen like starting from 40 to 80 percent cells are viable in the and depending at it also depending upon the parameters being used but if you can take care of the parameters then you can get very good cell viability with extrusion based bioprinter also right now cell density cell densities are in the bioing how many cells are suppose what is the density or density of cells so how many cells are loaded in per per ml of bioing suppose so the in case of inject the cell density cannot be very high so it is low cell density can be used like 10 million cells per ml can be very well used for inject based bioprinting because we have seen that that in case of inject there is a nozzle there is a nozzle and that through the nozzle only we are generating these droplets so if we increase the cell density then there can be a problem with nozzle clogging so that's why we cannot use very high cell density thing other than that there is another problem in case of inject thing the cells can settle down on the nozzle and that can clog them so that's why very high cell density is not advisable in case of inkjet based bioprinting but extrusion based bioprinting very high cell density can because this process we use some hydrogel some met biomaterials to encapsulate the cells so that's why we can use very high cell density and there is no there's not much problem of nozzle clogging if we can homogeneously disperse the cells within the bioink even another possibility is because if you can use higher dimensions nozzle higher dimension syringe or nozzles then cells spheroid can also be printed that is another important thing in this exclusive by printing we can even print cells spheroid cells spheroid means when 
the cells are clustered together in the in a round shape that we generally consider call, call as spheroids. So typically, the spheroid dimension is anywhere between 150 to 400 microns, but mostly people use 100 to 200 microns. Spheroids are mostly used for bioprinting applications, and that time, thus again, the nozzle dimension has to be around more than that spheroid size. So that's the, that is another thing. So cell spheroid densities can be very high in case of extrusion based bioprinting. Now, in, this, in case of laser assisted bioprinting, again, the cell density can be medium, like almost like 100 million cells can be possible per ml of bio wing. So here also, the cell density can be high, but moderate to high cell density can be because here because it's a nozzle free approach, and we can load the cells, we can load the bio this thing material within the load the cells within the within the bio wing, and then we can be the droplets can be generated, so this can be used. Now in terms of so in terms of cell density, inkjet typically is low cell density can be used, laser assisted medium to high laser can be used. In case of extrusion, a wide range of cell densities starting from low to high can be used. Even cell spheroids can also be printed with extrusion based bioprinting. Now coming to the printer cost, in inkjet bioprinting, inkjet bioprinting, the cost of the printer is very low. As I have already discussed, the common office printers are used or modified to print cells. So the cost of the printer is not very high in case of inkjet based bioprinting. But in case of extrusion bioprinting, the cost of the printer can be medium to high. Because this here, there are extrusion, the, there are, there are uh, printed movement controller, there are dispensing, material dispensing controller, all these different things are there. So that's why the medium is in case of laser, because of the laser is expensive, again the ribbon, all these things, the whole setup is expensive, so that's why the cost of the printer is very, very high in case of laser assisted bioprinting. Let's see the advantages and disadvantages of different bioprinting techniques. We have discussed some of this thing in our respective bioprinting technique, but let's here, let, let's, let us have a comparison of different advantages and disadvantages for all these different, all three techniques like inkjet, laser assistant, extrusion based bioprinting. In terms of, let us first talk about the advantages of this, these three techniques. Like inkjet based technique, we have seen that we can generate droplets of very fine, that is the first point anyway, but here low heat effect, that is the another advantage. In this case, there is not much heat generation, though with thermal based inkjet printing, there can be sometimes the heat can be generated, but if there is not much heat generation. Electronic control of drop size and ejection rate that is very very important. We can control the size of the Droplets in case of inkjet printing and the, their ejection rate. So those things are very much controlled So, so that's why it's a, it's an advantage So we have a control over the how much fine droplets can be generated and what at what rate we can deposit with that So that we can create a pattern of different particular particular drop size and particular particular rate of at particular ejection rate. So this is the advantage of inject printing. In case of laser assisted bioprinting, because here mostly we use a biomaterial of low to moderate viscous, so that biomaterial is coated in the ribbon, right? So th that's why we can use wide range of materials can be used for this kind of thing. So there is the material, because the material as such, there is not much challenge with material selection in case of laser assisted bioprinting. And it's a nozzle free printer setup. So that help various ways. One thing is there is no problem with nozzle clogging. Other thing is the droplets can be also here also we can create a verified droplets. So that's why micro microscale resolution is another advantage of this by printing technique. Here also because of this uh, microscale resolution we can create very fine droplets and that can be printed. So these are the advantages of laser assisted. In case of extrusion, again wide range of material choice. So we can use any type of material. The only thing is we have to have a low to moderate or very high viscous. Viscosity is a range and in case of extrusion is printed because of because we can use various ranges of viscosities we can use. So that's why materials can various types of materials can be used. But what when you are using for bioprinting, please remember we need to use materials that is aqueous based because we need to because our we also incorporate cells within this bio wing. So that is one important thing to remember. 
slightly viscous bio can also be used so in this case because we are extruding the material so that's why slightly viscous bio also can be used that's another advantage and we can print tissues with very high cell density that's a major advantage of inject extrusion based bio printing because certain cases in our tissue if you see in the native tissue cell density is typically very high also it, it differs from tissue to tissue but typically the cell density is high so to mimic that kind of native cell density we need to print at at a very high cell density right so that's why the the existing extrusion based printer that is the advantages we can print a high cell density structure another thing we can also print vascular tissue construct that is another advantage of extrusion based printer because there we can print a vascular construct tissue construct can also be printed and people have shown that the possibility of printing vascular tissue construct with extrusion in the later in the some like in one lecture i will discuss how how the vascular tissue constructs are being printed targeted with different types of by printing technologies so there we will discuss in great detail other thing is the uh, structure printed with extrusion based printer it has very good mechanical properties unlike unlike other to like inkjet based and laser system because you know that in both the cases it is like the droplets with the droplets we are creating the structures but in this case actually we are extruding a viscous material and that material comes out in the form of filament though whatever the structures we print it has typically it has good mechanical properties now coming to the disadvantage in case of inkjet printed limited choice of materials are available because we need to have the material that is this we have to add we need to use material that is that has low viscous viscosity so there is low with limited choice of materials available other thing is limited height you know that because i have also discussed this earlier thing that with a very low viscous material we cannot make a three dimensional structures so because if we put a drop on the stage or on the preceding drop then it will collapse or it will just slide away so i cannot create a three dimensional structures with this extrusion based sorry with, with inkjet based bio printing unless i use some support material the support structure like by paper or something high viscous bio cannot be used because then that this droplet generation there will be major problem in droplet generation and also there can be a nozzle clogging other things so high viscous materials can by cannot be used in case of inkjet that is the disadvantage of this inkjet based bio printing difficulties in complex 3d geometries so again complex 3d geometry for patterning in 2d surface creating very nice pat very complex pattern can also be created in 2d 2d surface but creating complex geometry 3d geometry is a challenge in case of inkjet based hey, when the structure made with this kind of inkjet based bio printing they have, have typically poor mechanical property because power is not that great in case of laser assisted the disadvantage the major disadvantage is the equipment is very expensive so this not high it's not very affordable so affordability is a concern when it comes to inkjet based bio printing other advantage is the heat effects right so when in case of inkjet in case of inkjet in case of laser assisted bio printer because we are using laser and we are hitting the surface we are hitting the the laser passing through the glass surface glass layer hitting the metal layer right basically it heats up so for very fraction of time also the metal layer heats up the temperature increases tremendously and that's why that heat can be dissipated to the bio ink and that bio ink there can be a detrimental effect on the bio ink because of that heat generated heat so that is that can be a that is a disadvantage for laser assisted bio printing now in case of extrusion based bio printing the disadvantage is like the viscosity and temperature of the material is a is a thing because in this extrusion based bio printer we have to have certain viscous we cannot use very low viscous materials and also we can cannot use very very high viscous material so we have to have a viscosity that in in, in the in between range where that can be very well used other thing temperature of the material we can that we cannot use the temperature with high temperature material so that can be also another thing now cell viability can be affected because of the extrusion pressure now when we apply pressure on the in case of extrusion based bio printing we apply pressure either it can be pneumatic or it can be piston driven pressure mechanical pressure so that can cause shear stress that shear stress can get generated at the nozzle 
that shear stress in turn can damage so cells can get damaged due to the shear stress so that is can be one challenging part so that's why we need to can to optimize the process parameters so that the shear generated shear stress is less now when low viscous bioink is difficulty in operating complex shapes so if we use low viscous bioink because the low viscous bioink also we can use for extrusion by printing when the viscous coming out there does the printed filament generally collapse due to the low viscosity of the material that cannot that cannot hold itself so that's what will happen that will collapse so we cannot create a very complex shapes with this low viscous bioink so that is one challenging in case of extrusion based bioprinting so these are the advantages and disadvantages of of these three bioprinting techniques 